Everybody wants to come up with excuses. I'm this, I wasn't born that way. I'm stuck, I'm in a rut. I wasn't born here, this. You can't be lost in life when you're this young. I'm a, a female, I'm an immigrant, I'm a minority, I'm transgender. I, ex- excuses, reality, the problem is, Nobody cares. Your lack of patience is killing you. Slowing you down on everybody else. Your need of things is killing you. I need a fucking watch. I need a fucking whip. You need to be happy because happiness drives everything. You're not lost in life. You're just early in the process. Everybody's trying to prove something so early. You fucking wrap your head around not giving a fuck about any advancement to your 29. Please, whatever it takes, call your grandmother, go to your great grandfather's burial spot, go back to the old country, go to a shelter, do something, do something that recalibrates your perspective on what is actually going on here. Every person in here fucking won the lotto. You won. Way too many people have made decisions without ever trying. Everybody's judging themselves way too early. You can literally do four different things over the next two years, six months at a time to figure out everything that you think you might like you should try to do. Doing something around passion is this, is very similar to love. You're blinded because you like it. It's not rational. It's not rational. The number one reason I push patience. Patience, man, patience. Everybody's looking up to audit themselves where they are now. Is because patience will give you the air cover to take risks. Time is your asset. What I would do is gather as many experiences as possible. The one thing a 20 year old has over me is 20 years. <laughs> get the fuck out of the machine for a second and think about what you're doing here. You get optimism and patience, you're fucking off to the fucking races. The 99% that achieve are willing to sacrifice, be persistent, put in disproportionate work, and think in 50 year terms, not 50 day terms. Just close your eyes until you're 29. Just close your eyes until you're 29. Because when you see regret in a man's eyes, it's fucking painful. Because you, have, you can't do shit about it. When you're 90 and you're not mobile and you're tired and it's over, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't build that company you wanted. You can't spend that time with your kid. It's regret. And it fucking drives the shit out of me. Look, I think failure has to be quantified. If you fail that you never can get up from it again, you know, that's not a good failure. I think, I think failure and adversity are the two things I think about. For me, as an entrepreneur, and very entrepreneurial, and always in my own stuff, all the failures along the way, even going back to like the baseball card show when I was 13 that I paid $400 for a table and nobody showed up to that baseball card show, that was a learning lesson. Those micro failures were super, super important. I think, you know, it depends on your stomach, right? Like if you, if you really fail, like go out of business, I think people take one of two ways, right? They're like just finished and they're never able to get off the mat and they go in a different direction. So to me, I think quantifying the failure is important to me. They gotta change, you gotta evolve. Like Madonna did it right. She reinvented herself 14 times. That's why she had a long career. You know, like you gotta reinvent yourself. You know, so I, let's talk about sports. When you're the best athlete and you're like the guy and you're like one of the top 15 players, Draymond Green, he's my buddy. Draymond really worked on his game yeah. every off season. You know, uh, Ricky Rubio, the flashy point guard from uh, Minnesota, if he developed his outside shot, he would have been a much bigger player. He had all the passing skills, the quickness, he's got everything. If, instead of going to Ibiza and the fucking chicks in the off season, he worked on his 18 foot jumper, he'd be in the game. If you have ambition, your actions have to match that. And too many people are just like, not putting in the work, their mouth is way ahead of their fucking you know, actions. Like, really? You're gonna be the greatest NBA player of all time? Why, because you think you got a little handle on the weekends? You need to shoot 15,000 free throws before school every day. What did you do from Friday 5 p.m. until Monday 7 a.m.? I'm just curious, like, and I don't think you shouldn't have a weekend, but I think everybody's ambition actually is more predicated on their actions than their words. My friends tell me all the time they're so ambitious, and I'm like, if that's true, then you punt leisure 
and you punt concerts at Jones Beach and you work. I realize what's going on here, one life. I realize that I'm living like this is our only at bat and most of you aren't. People fucking walking around here like they're coming back. People fucking walking around here like they're coming back. You're not coming back. Well listen, I don't want to impose my beliefs on others. Maybe you believe you come back. I believe you come back, you come back as a tree or a flower pot or D-Rock sneakers and that blows compared to being a human. And so I'm acting that way. I'm acting that way.